Hey YouTubers, um, finally on to the subject of Penrose and Hammeroff. This will be my last uh, video on the subject before I conclude. I apologise that I haven't touched on um, great thinkers like Bohm, uh, Wheeler, uh, Wagner, anything else. I, I know I've missed out a lot, but I can't be bothered to do these all the time. So, Penrose and Hammeroff's uh, essential argument. Well, there, there is slight differences. Um, Penrose published two books, um, The Emperor's New Mind and Shadows of the Mind. And these were very much mathematical objections about how consciousness is something that's beyond computation. And Hammeroff is really just his whipping boy that um, does a lot of the public speeches. And um, also being an anaesthetist, he provides a lot of the um, actual physical framework uh, for how this can happen. Um, so a, a brief rundown of um, the Hammeroff Penrose thesis like, combined together looks something like this. Um, because of Goldell's theorem uh, and the halting problem and various other problems um, that are known about uh, mathematical systems, no computers are able to achieve mathematical insight. Mathematicians are able to achieve mathematical insight. Therefore, um, computers will never be able to simulate this insight. Furthermore, this particular insight requires um, consciousness. It's, uh, that's what insight is, it requires consciousness. Um, and because of the non-computability of this insight, and thus the non-computability of consciousness, um, we have to look to a non-computable uh, system in order to find an explanation. Now Penrose obviously um, knowing a lot about quantum physics and it being the best explanation we have about the current structure of the universe, um, he proposes that it's a, it's a quantum mechanical explanation, that there are aspects of quantum mechanics which are um, fundamental to understanding this mathematical insight and consciousness and etc. Um, Hammeroff then comes along and adds um, how this mechano uh, quantum mechanical system had actually come into place and what he suggests is that there's um, the microtubules in the brain um, they, they have a coherence in um, um, when you relate it to uh, consciousness um, as states of consciousness change from wakefulness to sleep, the coherence between different parts of the brain is also uh, subsequent to change. And therefore, it's a quantum entangled state between macroscopic, um, macroscopic regions of the brain, specifically the microtubules, which um, communicate with, with each other according to this quantum entanglement. So that's the main thrust of the argument. Um, if, if you've not understood it, um, you can watch it again, or um, I have provided, or I will provide a link to Hammeroff, uh, his, his talk on Beyond Belief, um, which, um, to be honest, he got ridiculed at that. He got torn to pieces, and quite rightly so. Um, there are many criticisms of Penrose and Hammeroff, and... Um, Although um, both of the books are, are both of Penrose's books are, are quite fascinating, and it's always good to have a um, controversial, revolutionary uh, subject. I don't think the arguments are prevent, uh, presented very well. Um, I've talked a little bit about the halting problem uh, in a previous video, but I, I will just go on to it a little bit more because. Uh, to be serious told me to and uh, it is it is very central um, now what I would say about the halting problem I've experienced it myself because uh, I do a lot of programming and you know when you get infinite loops it's a pain uh, and and I can see that there's an infinite loop so therefore according to Penrose I'm doing something that the computer would fail to do any program would fail to do however what I would argue is that, well, partial solutions to the halting problem can be found. Um, furthermore, 
no mathematician can come up with a general uh, theorem for the halting problem. Um, what I think goes on is that as humans, one of one of our key abilities is the ability to generalize, the ability to pattern recognize and to spot trends, and that's what we do. Uh, that's what that's essentially all we do in some ways. So I would suggest that it is our ability to spot these trends, um, not our ability to prove how we're doing them. That's still beyond us. It's our ability to spot these trends and to generalize, which leads to these mathematical insights. Of course, um, rather than top-down programming, um, neural networks, and uh, specifically, are very good at this uh, ability to generalize um, and to find patterns. So I would suggest that if we had uh, complex enough machinery functioning in uh, the right way, it could also find these patterns. Um, it might be wrong, but we're not infallible either. Um, I mean, one of the criticisms that, well, I've, I'm going to post three uh, papers criticizing these views as well as Hamroff's um, Beyond Belief conference. One of them's by Dennett, which is, uh, I found it the other day, which is, is really interesting actually. Um, from a functionalist perspective, and he talks about um, how a chess program, for example, cannot beat a, uh, it can't be proven to beat a, a person. A, a chess program can't, uh, you can't say this is the checkmate algorithm. You can't prove it. However, most times, uh, against most people, the chess program will win. And he, he suggests that um, it's, it's similar in humans. Uh, there's also a paper by Grush and Churchland, which is, uh, that's a, a criticism from the neurological perspective, um, how they say that the microtubules in the brain don't account for consciousness in the way that Hameroff suggests. And he's being a lot more speculative than um, perhaps he makes out. And finally, there's a, a McDermott one, which um, is is similar to Dennett's paper, um, but it, they're definitely worth checking out. Um, that's all I'm going to say. I think I've covered a few of the other arguments before in uh, various other series. I hope you've enjoyed the series. I will wrap up, maybe make the next one a bit more aesthetically pleasing, script it and make it all fancy-like. Um, but generally, just to conclude, Pemrose and Hameroff's theory um, falls down on the fact that uh, I think it's a misapplication of Goldor's theorem and the halting problem and these non-computability problems. If you read some of the papers, you, uh, you can check into this for yourself. Uh, I also think it's um, very speculative guesses about neurology, something that you might also discover if you watch the... Um, the Hameroff interview, uh, the, the speech, which actually, if you can put up through Hameroff, uh, his Beyond Belief thing, uh, Ramachandran follows him straight afterwards, and Ramachandran's a bit of a dude. So, anyway, take care guys, peace.